Hey everyone, welcome back here to the North American LCS. We are gearing up for our final game of the day. That's Team 8 versus Team Dignitas. Now yesterday, Dignitas showed that their win over Cloud9 was no fluke. Yep, once again, a zingy pick Zach, and he made some smart engages to start some advantageous team fights for Team Dignitas. You know, another player that also came up big was Gamsu. He had 77.8% kill participation. And he showed that full power of Rise. He also had a really good flash play uh, where he ulted over that Varus ultimate to secure the engage for his team. Yeah, Dignitas looking pretty darn good. They're looking to be uh, turn that two wins in a row into a really large streak now while a teammate... These guys are still trying to get their first win, though. So, you know, opposites here in this one. We do have to consider, though, uh, it's been a tough schedule for teammates so far. They've had to face Team Liquid, Counter Logic Gaming, Team Impulse. These are all teams that were playoff teams last time around. So things to be expected, whereas teammate finished last split above uh, Dignitas. Like, this is a battle that teammates should feel good about. Yeah, true. And, you know, starting a split with back-to-back -back losses like that can definitely play on your psyche. And you know, I think you saw a bit of that in Kali's overreaching play. You know, meanwhile, their new AD carry, Nian, he was a little more upbeat, you know, acknowledging that it was a rough first game for him, but he learned a lot. Yeah, well, hopefully they've learned a whole lot for this one because they need to take down Dignitas. Right now, we're going to check out the starting lineups, so though. On the blue side is Team 8 with Cali Trolls in the top lane, Porpoise in the jungle, Slushy in mid, Nian on AD Carry, and Dodo on support. And on the red side, it's Team Dignitas up top, Gamsu in the jungle, Azingi mid, Shifter, AD Carry, Core JJ, and support Kiwi Kid. All right, so Team Dignitas, one of the very few rosters who held their entire lineup together from last split. And they've actually looked pretty darn good because of it. These guys sitting on two and one. They are one win away from being tied for second place at the end of the day. That's an incredible way to start your season for Dignitas over here. Uh, meanwhile, teammate, they picked up a new AD carry with Nian Tonso. Uh, they've played only one game with him so far. They were saying that in scrims, the improvement was immediate. Everyone liked playing with him. They thought the team's going to be so much better. But it's so far been a pretty slow start for the team. Yeah, I mean, that was just one game. They had to play it's CLG, true. who yeah, it's were true. looking very strong. For uh, for Dignitas, though, I really did enjoy uh, Kiwi Kid's interview uh, after last week when they were, he was asked about uh, the roster swaps and when they make any changes in the offseason. I was like, yeah, they just couldn't find anybody you know, that they thought was better. So every member on the team is irreplaceable. All right. They have that much confidence in the team and the squad that they have right now. I mean, to be fair, if, if results kind of continue the way they are, Dignitas are going to end week two tied for second place. I wouldn't change that roster ever. Like, almost <laughs> every team would... <laughs> sorry, right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, strong language. I, I didn't mean to say ever, but I mean, certainly that it shows that that roster is working. I did misspeak. Thank you for the correction there. But uh, yeah, I mean, Dignitas are poised to look really very good this split. And uh, Coach Rico, who's been there for a little while now, he joined part with you the last split. Uh, Dignitas ended... Uh, the spring split actually on a small upswing. They started picking up a couple more wins towards the end right there. They're one of the better looking teams right now. And, and to think about it, we've seen so many teams kind of flounder I in between the two splits. We've seen uh, Cloud9, I think, make the, the biggest sort of departure from how good they used to be. Team Impulse still uh, look like they have room to grow. And, and Dignitas looking to be in the top half of the teams in terms of skill right now. I like that these two teams have uh, pretty different strengths for them. Uh, Team Dignitas, I really like their uh, uh, Gamsu as well as Core JJ on the two opposite sides of the map, the mm -hmm. side lanes there, whereas Team 8 is so heavily focused around Slushy, and if Slushy has a successful game, you know, yep. whatever type of champion he's on, Team 8 usually tailor it around Slushy. Whether he's on Ziggs or something like LeBlanc, they'll change the play style uh, basically to revolve around their mid lane pick now mm -hmm. that he has really proven himself on this team. Absolutely, be, you know, one of the biggest carries. Absolutely. Slushi has been nothing but impressive on Team 8. And I think their goals with picking up Nian was to actually add another consistent force. Kali Troll's the wild card. Sometimes he can take over games, but it seems to be <laughs> uh, the exception more than the rule. But the guy that they've picked up to be that consistent damage dealer is that new AD carry in Nian. And I got to cast him all throughout the Challenger season when he was on Fusion. Uh, he wasn't known for his laning phase, but he would always 
Uh, think about Alltech and how Alltech always gets farmed. Nien would always manage to end the game with like the most farm in the game. He's also a vocal player. He could help with shot calling. And then in team fights, he would show up and do a lot of damage. That's the role that Nien had. And when you've got players like Kali Trolls and Porpoise and Slushy who are making all the plays early game, you just need someone who can sit back and farm and then turn it on into team fights. The one loss Nian's had so far this split has been a CLG. It's an excusable loss. CLG's a very good team. But here's a game where you need to prove that this new AD carry for team eight is worth the pickup, that he's going to improve the team because teammate were one game away from making playoffs last split, and you think they should have improved for summer. All right. How long do you think we have to go in the split until we see a Zach ban for a Zingy? I don't... So the champion itself is not... I'm going to say this game. ...is not deserving. Really? Okay. I, I'm just... It's a blind guess. I might be wrong. Like, we're going to know in, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> but I'm just going to... I'm going to be bold on this one. Again, the champion itself doesn't is there's nothing really right. deserving of a man there, but oh, right, it is his favorite uh, favorite jungler. Uh, yeah, so that is a top lane ban that Jarvan, the yeah. Gamsu top lane. He has been had success with it, a lot of damage, good early combos from him, and they actually decided to ban that over banning something like the Annie for Kiwi Kid, who has actually opted for other supports now yeah. and surprised some people. Alistar is still definitely deserving of. Uh, First ban there, but <laughs> uh, we can't mention sports without, of course, mentioning Bard. Wandering Caretaker, is that what it's called? Uh, the Wandering Caretaker, yeah. Uh, well, you heard Jet talk about it, actually, when he was casting, and he said the, uh, the gravity game, and he's like, you know, mid lane Bard would totally be great. Keen so should bring it up. Pretty sure that's exactly what he that's said. That's exactly what he said. You can quote me on this one. I'm quoting uh, Jad. Either way, first pick, Rek'Sai comes in for Porpoise. I think this is a very smart... Well, it's weird because none of the other junglers got pinched. So it, it's sometimes hard to say that Rek'Sai was absolutely the right choice, but it is a champion that Porpoise has been very successful on. When Teammate made a very strong run at the back half of the spring split, it was usually on Porpoise playing Rek'Sai. Yeah, I don't know. the That first pick, I feel like Zingy actually has played Gragas. He feels very comfortable on Gragas. That's a kind of a, an even first pick there trade. Yeah. For Dignitas. What uh, what lane do they want to focus on here for the double pickup? The bottom lane. They're gonna pick Bard. Clearly. Nar? Are you yelling Nar? Yeah, Nar. He's a really good champion. Guys, who's gonna play him this game? And we go. Last few seconds. Team Dignitas. You're not gonna get him because Nar has been picked up and Thresh here for Kiwi Kid. So as you mentioned before, he's been shying away from the Annie a little bit. Now on Thresh feel, for himself. Yeah, I feel like this is a Yasuo dare right now because the Yasuo Nar matchup uh, has shown to be so Yasuo favored, and they even moused over the Yasuo mm -hmm. uh, to sort of bait, I guess, teammate into it. Kali is definitely one who likes to get one of those winning matchup uh, yeah. champions he and will fight. pressure you hard if he does have it. He was on the receiving end. One of the first Nar Yasuo's that we saw in North America, which was Impact's Yasuo. Yeah. And that was brutal. So yep. he would definitely like to try out the reverse on stage. Well, if there's anyone to remind him of that match, it would be their coach, history teacher himself. Think back to last week. And Siver Nautilus is the pickup, though, for Team 8. So a pretty versatile lane. And it's one where Nian can easily pick up all the farm, as well as be a defensive wave clear tool for the team if things go awry early on. Yeah, I do always like taking away Sivir from Dignitas and Core JJ specifically. He had had so much success on that champion uh, last split. And yeah. since Kalista is banned, easy pickup. Yes, sir. Well, there's the Zac hover. There literally haven't been any jungle bans, just like the one Rek'Sai pick. And it seems like a Zingy's first choice may just end up being Zac again. So. It is a snowbally jungler, and if you do get an early lead, we've seen, you know, especially since he does like to go the route of maxing elastic slingshot. If your yeah, if your if your shots hit, if you can control the vision, if you can channel your jungle path past the enemy wards in the early stages of the game, you can be a very very terrifying force, you know, especially on solo lanes. Yeah. And I do really like Zach uh, against Sivir, actually. Even if you spell shield the Elastic Slingshot, you're still directly on he's top on, of him yeah, for the ult. That's, his goal is yeah, to get It doesn't there. matter. He gap closed. The, the, the stun not landing doesn't really matter. If you don't spell shield that, you get knocked back with less bounce anyway. So uh, definitely we saw 
Azungi practically carry his team up against Cloud9 when they faced Ash. Here's another immobile AD carry to go prey on. Certainly could work very well for Dignitas. We'll have to see. Corey JJ has picked Ezreal as a safe, consistent damage dealer from the back lines. And with all the diving Dignitas has, Ezreal can definitely participate here. Team may have plenty of knockups for Yasuo to prep him. And the matchup looks correct, so. No. Nah. I kind of like the lock in, but they're going to. They're going to. Run away from it. Just a team fight team, so Slushy dead. Plays his first Azir that I think he's ever played in the LCS. It was Ziggs and Vlad so far this split, and a lot of LeBlanc and Oriana last split. Plus whatever else he could get his hands on as time went on. So Azir in here, plus the Rumble top lane for Cali Trolls. One of the few times we've seen him play that champion as well. Big AoE team fight team for teammate. All right, so they're going to go poke. You shoot you right over that Azir wall. Now, picking the Kog'Ma right into the point-and-click Nautilus, though. Nautilus plus Rumble combo is a backline killer. See if uh, Shifter will be able to work his way around it. He's definitely going to have an early laning deficit, though. Azir, one of the stronger laners early game, as long as he can hide away from Zac. Azir does have some mobility to dodge these ganks, but you never know. Outplays can certainly happen here. Yeah, teammate with a lot of 5-on-5 five five power, a decent amount of lockup, a decent amount of mobility. Dignitas looking to play pretty darn far back, and even they have lanterns to keep themselves safe. All right. Callie, I wonder how long he's going to hold on to that smite. Uh, teleport smite, rumble. That would be weird. Very weird. Um, I mean, you know, the Magus enchant is fairly efficient, but... <laughs> what if it's, like, what if it's real? Yeah, well, he's got four seconds left. Hold on to it. And he will end um, the game. Yeah. No, he switched at the last second. Ah. All right. It is TP Flash Rumble. Oh, well. It'd be cool to see. Yeah, Magus Enchant Rumble. Maybe it's really good, but we're not going to see it today either way. Who knows if it's actually you strong? You can pure jungle with Rumble. It's actually not that bad. Really? I'm actually surprised that Rumble in the jungle is any good. Either way, before the, start, the, before the shots start firing on the rift, send your game predictions to us. Tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag T8 winner, hashtag DIG win. Let us know who you think is going to be doing better in this one. The team fight comp versus the poke comp, to put it in generalization terms. And the crowd is getting Bard win, who's not in this game. You guys are really bad at voting. Here we go, guys. The fifth game of the day, the 10th of the weekend. Teammate looking to finally put a game in the win column here, Team Dignitas looking to end the week in second place. I think a spot very few would have predicted them for, but they've maybe made it. We talk about the new bot lane of Team 8 and Nian was very familiar with Dodo. And now that they're sharing a lane, he says that they're working hard to form a good partnership. I like Dodo a lot, or playing with Dodo a lot because he's a really calm player and he's just really smart in general. And I used to look up to him a lot in Han, the game that I played before, because he's like a god at that game. So it's really interesting being on a team playing with him now. So I think we're going to get a lot better. We just need to work on some synergy. And we're playing at least like six solo queue games a day along with Scrim. So just trying to grind it out. Practice makes perfect, Freak. Definitely does. And it's definitely been a, a new partnership. The announcement of that new duo lane was fairly recent. So as we talk about teams learning and improving over time, but well, Dignitas have learned and improved quite a lot over the last split. And Team 8 almost starting anew here with the new AD carry. And we'll see how that trends over time. Remember, a few weeks ago, Nian said he wanted to be one of the top five AD carries in the world by the end of the year. It's a very lofty goal, but if you set your mind to it, you never know. <laughs> if you set your mind to it, you never know. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, really motivational. <laughs> You just might do it. Okay, is that is that a little bit more emphatic? Well, let's see here. We got jungle starts for everybody except for Seraph. Or I mean, uh, Kali. Yep, Seraph definitely not jungling in this game. Nope, that was last game. We got Rumble on the brain. Both duos will be fairly evenly matched. We'll see if the if the slightly later uh, arrival time does cost the bottom lane of teammate a minion or not. It looks like a lot of XP like has been will. gained by Cordy Day and Kiwi Kid. Yeah, in the end, not going to get any CS from the first wave. I think he got XP on only one of them. So, yeah. Slow start for the teammate duo. We'll see if the small XP lead ends up mattering here. Those Krugs 
Let's take a bit longer. And Sabre's really bad at them. She doesn't have the attack speed buff on Ricochet before she learns her ultimate, so I think she's like literally the worst at <laughs> killing uh, jungle camps of all the AD carries at level one. The worst. All right, well, let's see. The other thing I want to keep track of is Zingy in the jungle, uh, just because his early route. Oh, Ooh, man. Nian's at 230 health just from that, and Flame missed. Not a great start. Let's see Nian's second game here. But uh, Zingy, that early jungle rat I'm looking at, mm, looks like fast level three, focus at a solo lane, boom. And they lead Calitro's the knockup lands, and at some point he's going to have to flash or just die, and it looks like he's going to choose the latter. Just kidding. He flashed. <laughs> yeah, you had 50% chance there, Freak. One of the days I'll get it right. Corbus finds a Zingy though, and Zach without the slingshot up right now is gonna have to run away. Good slow from Gamsu. Helping him out, and out goes a Zingy. He's got a ward to place as well. Trinket ward down. You know, with Zach being that small, I'm surprised Tremor Sense even works anymore. Good trade on a Kiwi Kid though. Summoner heal used to keep himself afloat, and a great shot on a Nian. He also pops his heal to trade back onto Core JJ. Oh. The flash blade to ignite that. The kill, Core JJ gets it, but he's so incredibly low himself. The flash wasn't needed. Yeah. The end was dead anyway. Dodo gets a kill back. Yep. So initially, really well played by Daniel Tosh Duo right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but Core JJ really, really wanted that cash for the first blood, and it ends up costing him, you know, his life as well as the double summoners. So. All in all, not the worst story for teammate. Could have been terrible right there as they got outplayed two versus two. Yeah, and it will allow some time for Nian to walk back into lane. He's down five minions, but he can catch up with the double Doran's blade here. The first blood, of course, does mean pickaxe for Core JJ, and the fact that he's buying that means he's probably going to do Mana Mune first. Yeah. Backing for a tier after getting killed in lane is going to give you a really big stat deficit. So even though he could stack the tier, I think the attack damage is actually a much better choice in this case. Yeah, and if you can combine it at the same time, if you can buy a full mana mune, then it just stacks so much quicker anyway. All right, absolutely. Oh, another great chunk from Core JJ. He does not learn spell shield at level three. Oh, he did actually just didn't use it. Took a lot of damage for that. Might have been previously popped by a uh, hook from Kiwi Kid. He has a chance. Zingy, though, he's not giving up on that bottom lane. Shows his face once, returns with a circle around the entire dragon pit. Now he's in position for a shot. No summoners on this entire duo lane, so where exactly is Dodo going to go for this one? Hook back in. TP comes from Calitros to buy some time. Yeah, Magic TP late. a bit late by Gamsu. Cancels it. At that point, yeah, don't even... Uh... All right, well, looks like they're going to shove it in, but a healthy core JJ. They should be able to hold this turret with just three. Wow, this is interesting, though. The four of them still pushing forward. Dodo's out of health. I would go a Zingy gets smited. Out of the turret they go. Cali has got to be careful. Pull two turret shots, and in goes Core JJ. One hit. Oh! Nian blocks the Mystic shot. Mana Potion chugged by Core JJ. The... Skill shots barely, barely miss. That's a poor tower dive to even go for. Yeah. Zach is the low member. He's got a passive where he revives in four separate, uh, separate bloblets. Yep. And Core JJ was at full life. And he's uh, Ezreal. So that's all in all, it's kind of the same story here for teammate where we see them feeling overly pressured to make a risky move. Yeah. And you're seeing the risk... Uh, get punished right now. So this is actually pretty nice. Oh, he missed it. Never mind. Um, I, if Ecu landed, he was dead. Man, Nian was just so close to getting a kill right there by himself off a missed play by Kiwi Kid. <laughs> Core JJ with a shot He's at done that Kiwi before, Kid. actually. Get out of lane! That's the second time he's, he's done that. Go back and heal. Uh, he's done it before with the ultimate on yeah. Israel as well. Is yeah. what you're referring to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, From okay. last split. So there still is that mechanic where if you hover over a portrait, yeah, hover over the champion portrait, you shoot it at them instead. Could have been the case. Mm -hmm. Oh, Slushy. He's going to get Zack attack flash, but he wasn't in range anyway. But flash down all the same. The fear that a zingy Zack instills mm -hmm. in your solo lanes is so intense that even if, when you can see the shadow, know where he's going to land. Sometimes you just got to pop that uh, flash. Exactly. So another, <laughs> well, 
Another successful gank for Zingy. He's doing a lot of work across the map, yeah. uh, but not able to secure any kills for himself. Just burning summoner spells everywhere. And depending on how he distributes his time and effort, I mean, Kalitros' flash is going to be back up before the repeat game. He's still on the warpath, so he's up there at Kalitros right now looking for the repeat game. Well, they would have timed it. He's got a very small window. Kalitros' flash is up in 25 seconds. We'll see if that's going to happen right now, though. Dodo comes in from the backside, looks for Core JJ. Here comes Porpoise. They're going to find Kiwi Kid. The flashless Thresh. Summer Heal used, so does Ignite. Porpoise flashes out to stay alive. He will die to Kiwi Kid's Ignite, and Dignitas wins the 2v3. Ooh, that's probably the best feeling that you can have as a duo lane. Get ganked by the jungler, come away with a kill. Core JJ and Kiwi Kid feeling very confident in this game due to the strong early start. Let's yeah. see how, how quickly they can transition it. Because, you know, if you... This very well could have been a really weak mid game for Dingtoss with two tier stacking champions. Kogma obviously is going to have a really weak laning phase. He's trying to get to level 11, trying to get to the double item of his uh, loot and echo on top of his tier. But Ezreal looks like he's going to jump pretty quickly past it. There's that full amount of moon. He could stack it very quickly. Yeah. Well, that assist was uh, was only shared or by himself, actually. It was just the Kiwi could kill him for the assist. Now a TP flank coming in. Kelly Trolls cannot join, so Gamsu is in on this one. And actually, wow, pops the spell sheet before the stun and ult land. Nien flashes away. Gamsu is actually quite low. Can they get it? They hook him on in. The Hex Drinker popped, and that will not be a kill. He's got like 5 HP. Kiwi could also limps away alive. Porpoise needs to land these Prey, Prey Seekers. Seeker. <laughs> nope. Could have been body blocked. But all right, that teleport play was rushed because of the Narbar. Uh, Ezreal was not in position to follow up with any damage. The only support that Gamsu had was Kiwi Kid there. Not going to be able to add damage. So, bit of a fast and free style game we got going on here. Really fast game. I feel like I've seen six movies about that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But how furious are they for the ganks not working? I'd, you know, sell it off. <laughs> All right, Dodo, 1v1, 8 core Stop, JJ. They're going to start throwing stuff at him. <laughs> Please don't. Kelly Trolls, though. And now back and forth, these top laners will TP out of the lane looking for a gank, and someone else gets a bunch of farm off of it. The first time around, Kelly Trolls left, and Gamsu got to walk in the lane with a Hex Drinker and a matched recall, and he had a huge lead. Then Gamsu goes through the attempt, can't quite land it. Kelly Trolls gets to catch up and farm nearly. It, it, the risk almost pays off. If you get those two kills, it's super worth it. And you're like, God, what could TPs by this team? But when they slink away with five health in all these cases, you're just like, well, yeah. that was a bad choice. And the amount of outplay that you need to pull off to make that happen without you know, your AD carry being down there to provide damage. And flash force for just a play. We could still find ways to be very impactful on this Thresh. Yep. Small lead for the uh, Core DJ Ezreal and Kiwi Kid Thresh lane. The playmaking support himself. Kiwi Kid. Trying to make it work. Gamsu as well. Constantly chugging uh, mana potions in lane. I'm actually surprised he's using mana potions. Here. Yeah, he's got that tier. Nice feed, but yeah. I'm actually going to keep my eye on that one to make sure it's not a visual bug. No, he, he definitely had that one as a buff. Okay, definitely. He's chugged yeah. through multiple potions now. It's always it's always weird to me. Like, see, I actually uh, played against a guy who uh, picked up mana potions on like a Vladimir. Mm. That was okay. weird. That uh, is Bit called eager. flexing. I think is the technical term. Uh huh. He was diamond. <laughs> Made no sense. Well, really? let's take a look at uh, where the jungler path ends up now because the Zingy has been constantly ganking. Uh, so yeah. it really manifested itself in the CS discrepancy here between junglers. 500 gold lead And for that Porpoise. fully completed Cinder Hulk for Porpoise on Rek'Sai. So although Azingi was able to burn quite a few flashes, he got no kills for himself, no assists for himself. Yet. Not yet. In the end, they're going to get just destroyed after the spell shield anyway. Olsen tries to run. Core JJ gets stunned, but Azingi is not going to be stopped. Nice Q by Core JJ. Kelly Trolls will TP in, but it's into a one versus three. Uh, Did he even want this fight in the first place? No. Getting locked up. Flashes still gets flayed. Azingi shows up, and Kelly Trolls enters his own doom. 
There's some kills for him. Shifter comes running down through the river with his tail between his legs. Corpus goes in. He will find Kiwi Kid. And exactly where is his Thresh going to go? Towards the Dragon oh, Pit and stay Zingy. alive. They answer back out of Core JJ. And it's only the Azingi passive. Kiwi Kid is still standing after all this. Azir will finally knock down Aziggy, but it's 6-2 to two for Dignitas. That is so cheating. Azir at Whack-A-Mole is just unbeatable. He's got three soldiers <laughs> covering all the blotlets. Able to clean up Aziggy. But man, Kiwi Kid as well, living on the edge there, going back in with 50 HP just for the play to ensure another kill for Team Dignitas. And now the game is really breaking open for them with all the action down bottom lane. Absolutely. Three kills and three assists on Core JJ's. Ezri has got a sheen. 3,000 gold lead for the team. Keep on going with these games. Bites off the spell shoot. That's so cool. Yeah, he's able to get the damage and the knock up. And it actually is very important that you get that this early with Zach because he is, again, maxing the last six swing shot as a huge part of the kit. Uh, the brunt of the damage coming in. And then Kali with that teleport. The teleports from top lane so far on both sides. Yeah. Eh. Underwhelming. All right, and here comes uh, Shifter, bringing some friends with him. Porpus and Slushy going to combine here to uh, pop the passive of a Zingy. So it will cost them their lives. There's the Kiwi Kid going back in for that play. And Core JJ on the same page. Love this bottom lane. They're definitely uh, playing on the same style here. Very aggressive. Looking to abuse their opponents. And as he came out of that replay, Slushy just popped his ultimate on, I'm guessing, a Force Flash from a Zingy here as I look at the uh, spells on cooldown right here. So some interaction happened over there, but the Sightstone and Cinderhulk are both done for a Zingy. That fight just catapulted him back ahead of Porpoise in gold. So a huge power surge to the AD carry, huge power surge to the juggler as well. Wow, that hook landed on a core JJ. Arcane shift used, and all is well. Oh, just kidding, not all is well. Ignite comes on, a TP from Gamsu. They will knock it down, and Gamsu finishes the teleport. This is going to be a bit dangerous. Porpoise and the rest of the team are there, but Nian has to feel afraid as a Ziggy and Shifter are both coming down. Sushi is late to the party, but maybe they do enough in time. Gamsu's rage bar almost empty. House lands onto Nian, who took a turret shot. A bit oh, of an nice overextend, and they will get the kill with Shifter on the E. Equalizer comes back. They will trade back towards Gamsu. Team may have a bit of room to work with now as the wave comes into the turret. Blow for blow here in the bottom lane. Zingy does not have passive. Yeah, but he does have the last of swing shot, and out he goes. It will be the turret kill picked up, so teammate go one for one, I believe, and managed to knock up a, or sorry, two for one, as they killed the, uh, the Ezreal as well, and get the bottom lane turret. Ooh, I think the biggest thing out of that is Luden's Echo completed uh, here for Kogma. Let's see if he sticks around, because Shifter, I believe he was handed that blue buff. I don't know, not quite yet. He's just hanging yeah. around the blue buff. So it doesn't have it. And they don't have much vision. So they'll just yeah. take it safe. Give the blue buff over to Cog. We can stack up his tier and make yeah. use. And this is a good time for Kogma. He's level 11. His flash is up. He's got loot and he's got blue buff. This is like the first big power spike for Kogma. Sadly for Dictatos, the dragon's already dead. So you can only really fight for turrets. But I want to see what kind of impact Shifter can have now in this game. We can clear minions like no other. That's real easy. Even I can do that. Well, also, I, uh, those teleports were a bit better. You know, you can't really fault Gamsu for not canceling that one just because uh, he started channeling it as soon as the engage came in. Maybe it could have been a little bit earlier, but... A good ultimate from Kali uh, once he arrived as well. Yeah, well, we'll see how it pans out as the lanes shape back up to different ones, actually. So one turret apiece. Uh, top lane was already killed by Gamsu. Bot lane was already killed by the teammate duo. Core JJ left alone in the bot lane gets the second turret kill for Dignitas, but teammate have already sent their duo lane top side to battle the magic resist stacking Gamsu. Nar should not have an easy time against Sivir at all. He does have backup, uh, especially since the recall timing there for bottom lane just came in. Plus, we could see a grouping here from Dignitas. You know, level 11 Kogma with Luden and an Ezreal on your team. The poke, uh, definitely substantial. Yeah. One outer turret left. All they really need to do is focus on that mid lane. If they decide to group up and take down that one, you can start getting the uh, fairly safe 
Vision down with the Zac plus Thresh combo, using the Lantern to get those deep wards. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like Dignitas, with the gold lead overall and with Azingi having such a great impact so far in the game, looks like the siege may happen soon. Croy JJ did a pit stop for Sheen, but is going towards the Blade of the Ruin King. So another auto attack centric build for now. But the Sheen will still give him the poke that if they want a siege, it's going to be actually pretty powerful from this Ezreal. Yeah, and uh, if they can clear out vision, uh, plenty of areas for Azingi to charge up from. Very true. Wow. The war is that oh my friend. God. He had to pop heal to not die. And Slushi gets chunked out by the Ezreal Kogma combo. Douglas looking for the next wave. It's spawned right about now. It's just joining into the wave, and this could very easily be a turret pickup with teammate missing their mid laner. Sivir's still top lane. It's going to be at best a trade. Oh, but a good equalizer. Kali will actually keep the turret standing. Yeah, so we get uh, our first glimpse time. at the sniper combo there. The Ezreal, combo, uh, Ezreal Kogma. But be careful as far as the backline targets are concerned. Once again, another Azir. No magic resist. Looking for that late game. Slushy. Looking to be a carry for his team. Yeah. Once again. So far, equal in lane to Shifter and one and zero so far in the game. You can't really say too many bad things about Slushy in this game. Consistently is one of the strongest members of teammate. Looks like he's still on pace for that in this game. A good play so far by teammate as he did make an objective trade for just a Rumble ulti to keep the mid lane alive. Dragon still not respawning for at least two minutes, so Rumble ulti will be back up. So far, good mid game choices despite a very strong would be siege from Dignitas. See if Team 8 are going to be able to manipulate uh, Dignitas into fighting in one of these smaller corridors where they can really make use of Kali's Rumble Ultimate. Outer turret, just a couple more chips. And Dragon in two minutes. Ooh, red buff, Core JJ. He popped the Cutlass slow already. Kiwi Kid's going to join the Flay. Flash by Kali Trolls will dodge the ult, but the flash by Core JJ gets the kill. An assist from Kiwi, but overall, a 1v1 essentially. But the Dignitas Toss 80 carry. Kali Trolls trying to make plays. One and two. Core JJ has just been on a mission this game. Almost all arcane shifts forward. Only, only maybe two I can remember defensively used. Taken after the late great Woong. We'll see if he builds a Mandolin. Season two runner up. And he's not. Yeah, he's not late. He's still still That's breathing. True. That's true. Pretty sure. He's just. I don't think he's playing professional league anymore, so. Maybe that counts for pro gamers. If you're not, if you're not playing tournaments, <laughs> you count as late. Out of sight, out of mind. Look at that vision coverage, though, from Team 8. Pretty much all concentrated around Dragon. So that is definitely, you know, what they have their sights set on yep. for the next objective. And they would love to try and group up, get one of those Rumble Ultimates on Shifter. And with Teleport available for both top laners, we might see Gamsu join Kali Trolls up there soon. But right now, mid lane completely unstopped there. A lot of damage comes through from Shifter and Gamsu. That mid lane turret now incredibly low. Anyone left alone will knock that down, so Teeman have to keep that in mind. Blade of the Ruin King is done for Core JJ in time for this dragon fight. Blade Andrews is in for Kali Trolls, and not quite the death cap of Solution. True, true. Sork Elixir picked up by Kali Trolls. He's got home guard boots, and he's beelining over to the right-hand side of the map to fight for a dragon. Power spikes could actually be pretty good for the Rumble ulti with that Sorcerer Elixir. See if he can make it count. Nautilus is a great setup for Rumble ultimate. Yeah. Right now, Gamsu's stuck in mini Nart, just timed out here. He's tired for a little bit, and teammate trying to just barrel their way in as ult hits three. Dinktosh just looking for poke. It's all they have to do pretty much all game long. And now they start up the dragon. Shifter run, running a little bit dry 
Oh, yeah, Shifter's on the wrong side. Forbes is going to go in. Several T pop flash engage. Dota going to knock Cordy over the wall. Forbes going to get away from this one. And here come the soldiers. Kiwi Kid will ignite and die. But they trade back on the other one. A nice knockback by Azir. Keeps Gomzi from stunning the entire team. But there's still a lot of chase down. It's a two for one in favor of Dignitas, despite teammates' best efforts. Yeah, they didn't get. They didn't really keep anyone on the Rumble Ultimate. Plus, they were tanking Dragon. They rushed up. I thought they were popping it to just rush the Dragon, steal it, and back out. But uh, not able to land much with the uh, Rumble Ultimate there. And good disengage from Dignitas. They're able to collapse again after chasing off Team 8. Yeah, good job then. Dignitas up another kill up. Now tying in Dragons. And with a 3,000 gold lead, Poor JJ able to solo push down the bot lane. Dignitas definitely in control right now of this game. The poke heavy composition shifter was forced to run around the side, and it still worked out for him. Yeah, that's not a good sign for uh, teammates. So they rush over here. Dodo flashes. Oh, maybe oh, they were wow. not accounting for the mobility of Ezreal there. But Core JJ got over the wall really easily. Yeah, that ended up being a pretty wasted equalizer. Nar. A zingy there making that Zach count. Able to One get battle. the AD carry. Sivir bounce into the team. Ooh. They're going to answer back, though. Ezult will miss, and a kill picked up as Kiwi Kid falls over for the second time in this game. He may unwilling to say die, but down 2,000 gold. They've got some room to make up. Only improvements to be made. Blue buff again onto Kog'Maw, though. Should be a sign for Dinktas. Group up. Get that poke game running. Kali Troll's coming in. Maybe down river for Oh, Link. man. Nian could... Yeah, he popped ult just to run away from Ezreal and Kogma. He was two skill shots away from dying. This is You can see how just incredibly scary this poke team is from Dignitas. Yeah. Got the sniper duo. It definitely is. It's actually, yeah, I actually like it as a trio because Zack is the final bomb in the sniper combo. You poke him low enough and Who's it's like thinking, the if you're able to... <laughs> the best snipers. It's like uh, fishing with dynamite. But Zack... He, if you control vision around the tower, you know, you just poke him low enough and he can go in with that elastic swing shot a full screen away to jump in for the initiation. Well, it's so far worked pretty well for Dignitas. The follow-up front line of Nar and Zack, even though uh, they are sort of telegraphed if they're primary engagers, you kind of see him coming, you can maybe play around him, but it seems to be enough to work anyway as teammate have to get in medium lane, like in medium range to reach Dignitas to do anything. So even if it takes a second for your tanks to come in, it's certainly working here. The final bombs, as you say. As Ziggy and Gamsu. Planes use bombs to snipe all the time. That's, do you really call that sniping? <laughs> yes. All right. I trust you, Kobe. We're here, uh, you know, we're here lying to each other on the desk, so I believe you on this one. All right, let's see. Uh, if Dignitas can actually pressure towards a secondary turret here because no neutral objective. Uh, really just need to group up and get that poke swinging. And let's see what the next move is for Dignitas. As they are holding double sight stone. They've knocked down all three outer turrets. And there's not a dragon up for another four. It looks like it's going to be the bottom lane split push for Gamsu with Baron on the map. You need to put your teleport on the other side of it. You can't commit too many resources to the other side of the map. Certainly Rumble and Azir could knock that down rather quickly, so Baron certainly a concern. Even a lot of percent health damage on the Dignitas lineup. They've got Kogma with rank 1 W and uh, an Azir with Blade of the Ruin King, so both these teams can certainly threaten those neutral objectives. Cordy J actually went Iceborne. Interesting. He doesn't go for Trinity Force, but it's another kiting back item. Despite the fact that there's very little physical damage on Team 8, it's just for the CC. Well, plus, yeah, the slowing fields. They already have the Kog'Maw Ooze to work with. More slowing fields from the Iceborne Gauntlet. Just, they can control pretty much the entire battlefield here. Yeah. If you get slowed down, it makes it so easy to land this long-range poke. It absolutely does. Uh, we've already seen Yen. He has to blow summoners. He has to blow ultimate. He has to blow something just to get out of the slows. That could be very, very scary for the teammate lineup as the snipers continue to power up. The size of their bullets keeps getting bigger. And teammate really not making headway on the other side of the map right here. Dignitas seems to be the one able to make aggressive plays. Poor JJ shifts forward, lands a red buff. 
and T-Man have to respect it. Gold lead now 2.7 thousand. It's actually slightly growing over time for Dignitas, as they're just able to take more resources off the map every couple of minutes. Yeah, I think for teammate, what they really need to look for is just that rushdown opportunity. What I thought they were going to do for Dragon, you pop Silver ult, everybody moves forward. You even use your Rumble ultimate on the backside. You lead Dignitas a little bit so that you just bum rush them and try and get to the Kog'Maw. You take advantage before Zack and Nar have time to set up this uh, front line that is a little bit more timing based than most we see. Uh, just try and rush right through them and get to that Kogma. We'll see if that can happen then, because that's really the only way it seems teammate gets in there is to actually reach that back line. And though Ezreal's slippy, slippery, rather, Kogma's a little bit less so. Finally, mid lane does go down, but here comes a flash in. Shifter wants to land the artillery summoner. He'll keep Slushi safe. Mid lane turret dies, but Dragon's up in 15 seconds, and Slushi was forced to recall. Now, they did get Kogma flash out of that, what, even though it was used defensively. Now he's only sitting on the ghost, so the dog pile towards uh, Shifter. Yeah, makes Rumble ult actually work now against him. Corpus getting pushed out by Core JJ. Ezreal completely unafraid of shifting forward into these fights. They can shift onto the Dragon right now. The Gnitas are on it. Gnar on the other side of the map. He is mega, but it's timing out. Has teleport, but Dragon's dying so incredibly fast. Porpoise not going to try to steal. Dragon number two for Dignitas is going to give him bonus turret damage. And Cordage again uh, pushes slow. forward, slows down Dodo 8. And in comes Kiwi Kid. Sip ulti pop the hook, nearly hits Lushi, but they're going to find a bit of damage. In comes the to the back line. The bombs have arrived, and Dodo is dead. And now the rest of teammate locked in a little circle right there. Nien falls off. The chase on a Slushi, one hit away, trying to run. And he will get he out. It. <laughs> it's a three for one, though. Again, in favor of Dignitas, they're getting farther and farther ahead, and now they pick Baron. All right, yeah, another uh, strong gauge there from Mazingi. Kiwi Kid also popping that Righteous Glory, getting into range, forcing the fight. Core JJ even Arcane shifted onto the Rumble Ultimate, and they were still able to keep teammate on the run. Take a look here. Pinch for both sides. Gamsu on the top. Kiwi Kid luring them into the box, actually. Beautiful bait there from Kiwi Kid. Yes, they take him down, and then they get the support kill, but he's got three inside the box with Zack at their back and Core JJ firing from the side. Shifter has a really easy time sniping with Kogma off in the distance. Yep. Impressive by Dignitas. So here they go, poised. To make it a 3-1 start to the split. Taking down teams that placed better than them in the regular standings. And I mean, I do think this is actually a pretty impressive season by Dignitas. The two teams that were beneath them, or close to them at least, Winter Fox and Coast, both got uh, their spots taken away by challenger teams in the LCS. So this is a, a tougher lineup now in front of them, teams that theoretically might all just be above them theoretically in the standings. And Dignitas, Starting out 3-1, and one, knocking down so many of these contenders. It's a very good start to split for these guys. Strong start to Baron here. They should be able to take it very quickly. They do have vision control, but Tremor sense on Team 8, as well as the Scrying Orb. Reveal their plans. Teleport gets the Sivir ultimate burned. But, you know, two waves pushing there for Team 8. Uh, they could probably just back right off. Yeah, looks like they can't ride the top lane, though. Kali Troll's forced to be very afraid of Gams, who's managed to stack a ton of magic resist, and Kali Trolls just can't do anything at all. It's going to flash the wall, but does Gamsu really even care? Tosses the boulder, lands the slow. Hop into Q might be enough to catch down Kali Trolls, but the rumble barely gets out after burning his flash. Cute flash for the Randuin's active there from Gamsu, because he did not build a frozen mallet going in for the active slow. Ends up... Just being the flash burned, no kill for him. Yeah, flash for flash, summoner TP for Silver Ulti, but Silver Ult back up. In 45 seconds from now, teammates still holding on. They sit 4,000 gold down, but one good team fight we've seen from the likes of TDK. You can turn one oh. good fight around. Everything feels good again. No, that hook on a Porpoise is going to be pretty dangerous. Flays him back through the puddle. But wow, they get the kill first onto the Thrash. Porpoise trying to run Gamstu in the middle of everything. Gets double CC to say disengage from us, please, because Meganar is going to be too much to deal with. A one for one overall. 
All right, bottom lane pushing. That one's going to hit into the turret. But, you know, no other lanes up. Dignitas don't really get anything out of it. Both teams back off after an even exchange. See if they actually decide to, you know, make this blue buff worth it here. Shifter got another one. They really want to make use of it now. Kog'Maw is in full power, by the way. Well, he's not... Is that 16? That is 16. All right, that's full power. He's got the Transformed Seraph, Ludens, Magic Penetration. Yeah. Maxed out ulti. Siege now. It's going to be that ridiculous. That is the name of the game for Dignitas. And we'll see. Once again, teammate, their route is to pop several ultimate and rush straight at him. Yeah, we'll see if teammate can do that. Maybe even a flank just to get a, around some of these guys, but they've not found ways to do that so far. Dig the toss. They start up on Baron Nasher, 33 minutes in. It's always been a tricky thing for Dig the toss, but they're going to catch out Slushy. Down he goes. Shifter plus Kiwi Kid. Eliminate the teammate mid laner. Makes it even harder to stop this Baron Nasher. And Porpoise still around. 2,000 health left on it. He's not going to get in range in time. No, Flayed out of the tunnel. And Baron goes over to Core JJ. Shifter is unstoppable. His fifth kill picking up Porpoise. Whew. All right. Well, that should definitely be some inhibitor turrets at least here for Dignitas. Nobody died in that. They have a perfect sieging team as well as the Baron buff. So everybody heading straight up that mid lane so they can push two at once. And for Team 8, another rough game here. Yeah. He had second, rough first week for him. Team really struggling across the board. Slushy's still living up to most of his hype, 2-1, and one, the best scoreline on the team. But in the end, unfortunately, a very rough early laning phase. He used to lane swap most games in the Challenger series. It was his team fighting more than his laning phase that made him strong. And Dignitas managed to punish that pretty cleanly. Cordia, JQ, we get Anna Zingy all together. Putting a lot of pressure down there. Dignitas sitting close to 8,000 gold ahead now as time moves on. And looks like they have yet to make any headway really with this Baron buff though. Four turrets still the score. Oh, Dragon's up. Play into Porpoise, more poke coming in, and this Rex Light Force will flash away. Tanks and Ezulti getting hit up quite a bit. Ignite is on as well, he's forced to run. The tanks cannot land any engage. Dignitas don't catch teammate, but it's teammate forced to run from the poke. Yeah, enough damage done. Dignitas should easily be able to split now. Pick up the minions as well as the dragon at the same time. They are running out of Baron Timer though. So that is left. one thing in favor of teammate. As we sit 35 minutes in, teammate have yet to find the kind of fight they've needed. Botling kills went back and forth a little bit, but as soon as we got towards team fights, teammate have not found anything to do. Ultiana Gamsu becomes Mini Nar, the trinket used to reveal him. Hook will land, and here comes the hard engage. All of them, but they push him over the wall. Slushy saves Gamsu for a couple seconds. All right, Silver Ultimate down. Now let's set up down. They still have the oh, Rumble Ultimate man. the end. Flash over the wall, use the end, can't quite get flayed, but here comes the engage, all the same. A bunch of damage from Azir, Core JJ still safe, Slushy over commits, Azingi's there, the cannon turrets are as well. And another kill for Shifter, 6-0 six, oh, and 6 on this AP Kog'Maw. Ooh, yeah, he is a massive force right now. Late game Kog, not much to do about it. Can't go for any other targets. And on the last dregs of Baron buff, it's going to be the mid inhibitor going down. More map pressure for Dignitas. This inhib will be dead while Baron respawns. The recent dragon was already picked up for movement speed, so Dignitas in control of everything. Core JJ forced to run, but the slow field makes that easy. Teammate have still yet to make any great inroads. They got some damage, but they just don't have the durability to tank this team for long enough. Yeah, it is really hard to tank a five item, level 18 cog. Gonna shred you, not only with the void staff, but also can tag one person with, oh. Yeah. One. 
Dodging what he can, they find Core JJ. Though the over aggressive Ezreal will get punished, and the end stays alive. Maybe this is the fight for Team Eight. They've traded out their support. Porpus trying to run a Nar only stuns Cali trolls, and Azir is of course in the fray. Goes in, finds Kiwi Kid, fights Shifter, but drops for it. The kill goes to the Dignitas mid later. Cali trolls flashing out, stays alive. It's a two for two. Nien on the run does survive, but no health bars left for Team Eight. Ooh, Shifter just needed to land one more ultimate. Pick that up. Two for two, though, for Team 8. That's pretty good news. About as much, about as good as they can hope for at this point. Well, you're seeing the glimmers of hope. Maybe these chaotic team fights can work for Team 8. Over time, they get tankier. Double summoners down for Kogma. So, yeah, Core JJ, he's been playing really aggressive all game long. Finally punished for it there. Dodo going to get right on top of him. Yen was down to like 50 HP as well. A little life steal back up here. Slushy going in to try and pick up that support kill. Comboed with the trap. He, he should have targeted Shifter first. Probably. I think it didn't mean anything, but he would have one-shot Shifter. Probably. That Kogma is the one throwing out all the deeps. Yeah, when you've got Death Cap Void Staff and the Cog's got base MR of 30, he will just die to your combo. So Slushy, I think actually the, one of the first missteps I've seen with him this game. I think that was the wrong target to go for, but teammate just surviving barely as you're quite good at knocking down uh, super minion waves. And nothing major has been gained in a little while from the Dignitas lineup. Scuttlecrab picked up. Pink board on top of Baron. They're looking at the blue buff here, but it's gone. So do you consider if somebody hits an artillery shot to it to be a snipe? Huh. I don't know. Maybe I have like two strikes of a definition. That's definitely a bomb. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just like processing. I'm not actually sure anymore. Hold on though, because teammate have come to set up the bomb on Gamsu here. Ulti comes across from Ezreal, tags on the two. Meganar is there. Nien is safe so far though. Teammate able to disengage as Iggy comes in but doesn't find anything. Slushy misses the uh, the combo to dodge away though. And he's nearly in range. Nar jumps the wall. The Boulder's gonna land, Slushy forced ult them away, but he's still getting poked, picked up by Cora JJ across the wall. And that's the key mid laner down from Team 8. Ah, uh, yep, they only get one, and he's toast. Core JJ, those Mystic shots pack a punch onto uh, Armorless Azir. Most definitely, he can only take two of those before he goes down. And this may be the time where Dignitas finally crack in. Grab another inhibitor for themselves. Uh, Rumble well, it clears it out. Rumble. And it's well enough aim that it clears the second wave pretty nicely as well. Not a lot of progress made here by Dignitas as Sivir comes to help out. Still the poke from Ezreal and Kogma putting a bit of damage through Nien. Ooh! And now he's out of range. One more hit would have killed him. But that still means a low health inhibitor turret. Dignitas holding on a map control. Azir is back alive, but Baron's on the map here. Blue buff steel came through safely for Dignitas. They go back in, can't quite find the engage, but they do slow down Porpoise. Core JJ still on the hunt. He's got to be a bit careful. Does walk away with very little health left. <laughs> oh, missed anchor from Dodo as the wall was in the way. All right, big bottom wave here for Dignitas. Perfect situation. Side wave prepped, go for Baron, double pink wards, and this is all or nothing for Team 8. Rush on in there, try and make something happen. No ult for Kalidros, so it'll be a very difficult fight, but they've got to go now. Baron at half health, these guys still not walking forward. Azir very far away and shifting to zones out the team. And Team 8 call, you know what, it's not worth it, guys. We're not going to win this fight. Give it over. Baron number two goes to Dignitas. Yeah, it's hard to make that call just because you're facing Meganar and the Kogma is ready to turn on you in a second, but... Now they're going to have to deal with pretty much the same situation boxed up inside their base. Baron Minions chipping away at them. Bot lane turret goes down. Nian doesn't even want to finish clearing the wave. He's too afraid of getting jumped on as there's just no ward control on that southern jungle. Just a single one for Team 8. It means Zygnatos, even though they all walked at Baron and they walked all the way across the map, Zygnatos still get the dragon that Team 8 could have potentially traded for. But the, 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 the look at Baron and then the turn around and then the, okay, we should clear mini waves instead. Team 8, we're seeing cracks in their shot calling for sure. 
Time to defend the old Nexus. How quickly can Dinktas group up and go for the open inhibitor? Pretty soon. The okay. recalls coming through already. Honestly. Oh, here it comes. That's what they'll try. A base gate maneuver. Maybe they can get in on the side and somehow take out Shifter. Yeah, this might oh my god, that's half health off Slushy, and that's a Riley's Crystal Scepter on this Kog'Maw now, so subsequent hits are much more likely here. Mid lane and hip goes down, top lane and hip turret is gone as well. This could be the fight that breaks the game right now. Kelly Jules overheats and he can't ult. He's got nothing to do and dies before he can equalize anything. Five versus four, in comes the engage. Dodo tanks up what he can. Slushy getting knocked into the inhibitor, betrayed by his own base. Knocks in Kiwi Kid, but there's too many kills coming across. Already three dead from teammate. Now the stun from Gamsu, the crunch, takes him down four to zero in this fight. This could be Dignitas winning the game right now. Goomba stop if I've ever seen one there. Dignitas, congratulations on their victory to end out the week. Three and one for Team Dignitas. They end week two tied for second place. Four games into the season. Teammates still look for their first win. They have had a rough season, or a rough split. Start to this split. Re-entry, if you will. Shipping out Maple Street for Nien. An attempt to switch things up. They definitely have a lot of work ahead of them. Yeah, I got to correct myself, by the way. I forgot both Team Liquid and Counter-Logic Gaming lost today, so Dignitas tied for first, actually. I was expecting I guess those if they're all tied, you can call it everyone's tied for second. They're all they're first, second, first. and like third and everything together. Yeah. You can angle that if you want to. So my mistake on that one, TSM as well, three and one on the split, I believe. So Dignitas at the top of the table at the end of two weeks, also impressive. I think one of the teams coming into the season, people were least likely to expect to be there. But they stuck the roster together. As you said, none of them wanted to replace any of the players on that team. They said, everyone here we have is the, best in the, is the best player we have for this position that we can get. And Dignitas, definitely looking like it. Yeah, I really like Core JJ in that game as well. You can tell the killer instinct really came out from the very beginning. Yeah. Looking for very offensive plays. You could argue it was slightly over aggressive. I think the flash into the turret may Definitely be a bit Definitely at much. times was. Definitely at times was, but wow. Dignitas, one of five teams actually at three and one. CLG, Gravity, Liquid, Solomon, Dignitas, all these guys having a strong start. And those seem to have be the teams that have set themselves apart as the, the heavy contenders at the top of the table. And that'll be interesting as time goes on. We've certainly shaken up the standings quite a bit right now. Uh, Cloud9 having a very slow start to the split. Dignitas having a very great start to the split. Impulse in the middle ground here. It's just interesting seeing what one split's worth of practice has made, what, what difference it's made. Where you've quite got... Quite shake-up. Uh, you know, and my two big ones to point out are, are specifically Gravity and Dignitas, who look so much better already. If they improve at this rate, I don't know what that's going to be like, but it, it's scary. The, the week over week unsustainable. improvement. <laughs> probably unsustainable. Otherwise, they win Worlds. And that's a, a difficult task to reach. But uh, I, I'm just honestly, as, as a general theme, very impressed with the growth of some of these teams here in North America. Definitely some of the individual players as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys coming out with the strong split. We met, you mentioned Solution many times during the game. Even, mm -hmm. even with the team behind, uh, still manages to look very good. Yeah, on a, on a somewhat slow mid-range mage. So, hey, uh, unfortunate game from teammate. We'll see what they can do next week. But Dignitas at 3-1 and one is pretty impressive. We're going to throw it down to Riv, who's down on the red side. How much is that? Thank you very much, gentlemen. I am joined here by Kiwi Kid. We're keeping the tradition going strong here. A little intimate interview at the end of the game once they get a victory. Kiwi Kid, there has been exchange here for Dignitas. You guys have now gotten half of the amount of wins you guys had at the end of the spring split. What has changed that you can tell us about? Um, definitely one of the biggest things, I'm finally, like, a decent player. <laughs> I think we've had a lot of problems with my play, but I fixed a lot, and also, like, I've been taking over a lot of, like, the mid to late game shot calling, and a lot of it I attribute to, like, our, our coaches, um, Rico and Joyluck. They've helped a lot, 
and they've really put me on a path where I can not only not only do I can look for them for guidance, but I can watch VODs and like understand myself. Like I've been given fish and being taught been taught how to fish. So I'm really thankful for them. Best of both worlds coming out of that. The synergy as well with the Zingy coming out of the jungle. It just seems like there's a lot more for the team. You guys are a lot more, you know, just going in with his ultimates and assured that he will do the right thing. What, where did that come from? Uh, I've been actually talking to a Zingy a lot, and I've been like, just as Rico and Joy Luck opened their arms to me, I've been opening my arms to a Zingy, and I told him, like, just be confident. It's okay to make bad plays. I'd rather you would make bad plays and talk than not playing anything at all. And just everything's been going really well, and I'm trying to help him out with this. Actually, I, I don't want to say because it's kind of one of our weaknesses, but if you've been watching, you can understand bands and picks, but no, nah, I think we can go really far with this comp. Very much so, and that's going to be difficult next week. Team Solo Mid and Gravity, how are you feeling about those matches? Final question. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Like I, I feel finally like we can tr truly and solely take them on, and yeah, I think they should be scared, so... All right, Kiwi go. Kid, always a pleasure. Congrats on the win, man. We're going to throw it to the analyst desk to break down the rest of the day. Thank you, Riv. I mean, Dignitas 3-1, it's been said, I don't think anyone would have expected them to be right up there tied for the number one slot this early into the season. So, uh, you know, in trying to break down the things that have changed, one of the big things I think is a zingy and his confidence going into these games. Yeah, uh, we're talking about with Kobe.